This is the place on the planet you can come, you can be an American. I would think people would be grateful for that. I really would. And honestly, we know they are because there's a long line waiting. There ain't a long line to get in those places. They want to come here because of this thing called freedom. So Michelle and I got involved in, for the first time in my life, I really started connecting the dots that God had his hand in America, that I had a responsibility, and it wasn't free. And for the first time in my life, I started reading books on biblical worldview. That's kind of a buzzword now. Some of y'all might have read Dr. David Noble's big, thick book called Understanding the Times. And I just, it wasn't that I didn't understand, I just didn't conceive of it. You know, instead of, here's an issue, how do I feel, feel about it? How do the experts feel about it? How do the polls read? Because well, everybody's got to believe the polls. Polls are always right, right? And so I never connected it. Wait a minute. There's an issue. I need to look at this through a God lens. How's God feel about this? What's God say about this? What's God's word? And George Barna, who's one of my buddies now and is a Christian pollster, he says the number one reason people live church today, and I mean any age, any denomination, any background, any region, the number one reason they leave church is they don't know why it relates to their life. So we as, I'm a Sunday school teacher, I'm not a pastor. You as pastors, as church leaders, that's the task is showing them how the Bible is timeless. Uh, CJ and I were talking last night. Our pastor did a sermon on Elijah yesterday. You know, he finishes defeating the prophets of Baal on the mount. And what is it? Then Jezebel threatens him. He runs off and he's in a depression. That's how life goes, right? Peaks and valleys happen in our lives. And a lot of times we learn a whole lot more in the valleys. And if Elijah went through tough times and challenges, then, hey, maybe I'm not so good. I want to. Uh, so Michelle and I get involved, we, we go do our deal, the boys come along, CJ was born in 97, Bennett was born in 2000, I get really involved in politics, uh, in 06, tragically, my wife died, uh, 18 and a half years, uh, Michelle passed away, I was a single dad with two little boys, uh, who were five and nine when it happened, um, and uh, God just used the whole thing, uh, you know, a lot of times things happen in our lives, we don't get a vote, um, I screamed out in desperation, uh, my wife took her own life. Uh, she committed suicide uh, next week will be 14 years ago and um, one of those things that happens that you know you don't wish it on anybody you hate it um, but God's good through it all right I mean he's good through it all and um, Romans 8 28 hit me that day as I was cradling her and I was like okay Lord all things really all, all things and he asked me to believe it and I told him I would stand on it and I, and I did uh, that's exactly what I did and sure enough long story made short I met a girl named Dana and I met her about seven or eight months later. She too was widowed by suicide. We met on a blind date and uh, we've been married now 13 years and we have four kids. She had two little girls and had two little boys. If that ain't a God story of redemption and restoration, it is, it's wonderful. Now, I kind of hate telling it, you know, but I do my testimony a lot of places because I got to watch God work. I did. Uh, I cried out in desperation. I really wouldn't wish on anybody. I wouldn't, I don't wish anybody to go through that kind of thing. It's, it's, it's terrible. It's horrible. It's, you know, unspeakable kind of stuff. But watching God work, we walk by faith, not by sight. I got to see him work. I, I did, and, and it's, I'm honored by it. And so I felt this obligation, and, you know, I'm one of these people who believes that there's a man named Jesus who died for me. He hung on a tree. He took away the sins of the world. But I also believe it's my responsibility to accept that. Confess with my mouth, believe in my heart, right? And um, therefore, when I look around at the country's problems, I know that's my responsibility, too. And so after I married Dana and we had the kids put together in 2011. I got back involved in politics. I ran for state party chairman in South Carolina. Uh, I ran as a Christian who happened to be a conservative, who happened to be a Republican. I felt a whole lot more about the issues of the core, the heart, than I did about political issues. But I knew if Christians weren't involved, that's what I was out speaking about. If Christians aren't involved, guess what? <laughs> Look around. Look around. And, and when Christians leave the scene, we're not losing the battles. We're not in the game in some places. We're not even in the game. And it's not about just the presidency or a congressional spot. It's about school board. We're losing school board, y'all. We're having things forced on our kids you wouldn't dare agree to. Uh, county councils, city councils, the ordinances that are being passed. We, we've lost these things because we're not even involved. So I got involved because of those reasons. And y'all may know South Carolina is the first in the South primary state. So it put me in the spotlight. Um, because of that, I did every political show on television. I think I did 57 national TV interviews, according to my staff. And on one of those shows, a guy named Reince Priebus saw me speak. It just so happened I was defending my faith. I think it was Al Sharpton's show on MSNBC, which I hope y'all ain't watching a whole lot of MSNBC. But 
I was doing all the shows. And so Reince Priebus, who y'all know now, was the first chairman for Trump, uh, was the chairman of the Republican National Committee. He said, hey, I'm a believer. I'd like to get to know you. I mean, I voted for the guy, but I didn't, I didn't know him. I was on his committee, uh, but he's the national guy. I'm the South Carolina guy. And so I said, yeah, I'd love to come meet you. I was extremely vocal about how the campaign of the Romney campaign at the time and the party treated Christians. They never said a word. Mike Mewis and I had this conversation sitting in your car one day about how the party ignored the faith vote. And so after the election, I think I'd said on MSNBC that I thought Barack Obama would be the worst train wreck of a disaster to ever strike Christians in America. I was right. Y'all know that all these homosexual, pro-homosexual laws were passed because of Obama judges. Just, it's just fact. And the things that you're being forced it on now, I mean, think about it. Who would have ever thought that somebody would argue to go to the different bathroom? Did you ever really think this, that thinking people? It's right there with defunding the cops, isn't it? It's just, it's insane. Uh, you know, I, I joke with people when Dana and I got married, we we're trying to find a way to put the kids together. And so the first summer home from school, they were like, Dad, we're bored. Oh, that's fantastic. I happen to know the code for bored. Bored, CJ, remember this. Bored means, Dad, I would love to pull weeds in the hot sun. See, that's, that's awesome. I got weeds. It's hot out. Let's go pull weeds. But they, they, they got unbored after that. So Target says, you must let boys who feel like girls go to the bathroom. Okay, that's code. For Connelly's, that means don't bring us your money, Connelly's, which is fine with me. I don't have to give my money. But when the government says you must, hey, pastor, you must let a boy who feels like a girl go to the bathroom, or you must hire this person who doesn't agree with you to be in your Christian school, or you must teach this curriculum, I got a problem with that. I have a real problem with yeah. that. And when it's being forced and coerced, I become pretty libertarian because I can read in the Bible the difference in that. So here I was, I got involved in the party. I go to Wright's and we got to talk to pastors. You got, we, I've been speaking at church for 25 years. Don't ignore the faith vote. They don't want to be a party. They don't want to be about a candidate, but they understand the policies. They understand these are principles, not candidate things. These are not about a pol political party. These are about principles. And let's face it, uh, life is not a political issue. It's spiritual. It's been politicized. But it is a spiritual issue with me. I'm one of those guys, I've never voted for a pro-death person. If somebody's going to kill a baby in the womb, I ain't voted for them. I don't care what. I voted for Mickey Mouse. I have written in Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck instead of voting for people from my quote-unquote party because I'm going to fall on the sword on that one. Uh, marriage is not a, that's not a political issue. It's a spiritual one. God says clearly, male and female, he created them. I can show you chapter and verse. Israel's not a political issue. That's a spiritual issue. We're commanded, blessed are those who bless Israel. Cursed are those who curse Israel. I don't want to be on the wrong part of that, y'all. Woe unto them to call evil good and good evil. Woe, I, I, I don't want to be on the wrong side of woe. That's a little old word that I, I don't want to find out what God's talking about. Do you? And so anyway, I said these things on TV. I was critical of the party. I was critical of the Romney uh, organization. And, you know, Christians should be involved. We should vote our values. They didn't mention a, a thing about faith, not one time. So after the election, I go fuss to Ryan's. It wasn't his fault. I, I knew that. But I go fuss. Hey, we, we blew this. You know, because now it's not just about the top of the ticket. It's all the way down the school board. If you don't go get Christian vote, and here we are. <laughs> here we are a few years later. You pay these ripple effects over time. So after that, and it turns out I was teaching a book called Think Like Jesus in my Sunday school class at First Baptist Church in Newberry. And it impressed on me, Matthew 5 being salt and light that's an obligation thing. I don't see there where it says, yeah, be salt and light except in politics. Yeah, you don't, don't do it in politics because it doesn't apply there. I think it applies most importantly in the places maybe we're not the most comfortable. That's just the truth. And so here I was. I make these uh, comments. I'm teaching the Sunday school class where it impressed some of me. You Christians better be involved. So I'm reading this book called Think Like Jesus, and George Barna's numbers tell me this. There are 82 million people sitting in churches on Sunday. 82 million. Now, I won't slice and dice all the differences and how they feel, but 82 million. 30 million Christians vote in a normal election. I said on Governor Huckabee's Fox News show, between 55 and 58 million Christians that confess Jesus is Lord don't vote in a national election. So I got a little pushback from the experts in the consulting class, but I looked. Gallup, the Pew poll, the parties all agree it's between 40 and 50 million non-voting Christians. 
That means we don't have to lose nothing. So uh, Ryan's talked to me. He said, yeah, I need to hire you. I didn't want to live in D.C. I turned him down. I got reelected as chairman in May. He come back in June. He said something really important. It struck me a lot. I know I've told Jack Martin this. I've told Mike Nealis this and others. And I said it on a couple of Zoom calls, too. He said, Chad, you're an odd duck in the political world. You love the Lord and you understand the political process. I want you to do this. So I got to be the first ever national director of faith engagement for either party. I started July 1st, 2013. I went to 43 states. I spoke to around 85,000 people in meetings like this, just like this. I went all over the country talking to pastors and faith leaders. Just get involved. Hold voter registration. Tell your people why these are important issues. Tell them to vote all the time, every time the polls are open, and vote on biblical values. Don't vote party. Don't vote person. Vote principle. And by the way, Jesus ain't running. Therefore, we're always voting for the lesser of two evils. Amen? Amen. Amen. So you're not going to find perfect, and I know this. I have a wife and four children. We can't agree on a Whopper and Big Mac. I have good amen on that. So we're not going to get everybody to agree when somebody says, well, I don't like this person because. Well, oh, me neither. <laughs> me neither. I had a pastor come up to me. I think I was in Arkansas. I would just taken the position. He said, Chad, I just don't trust the party. I said, I'm a former state party chairman. I don't either. <laughs> but when I compare, it's not a tough comparison. It's not. And so people get frustrated with one or two issues. They don't go show up, and guess what? We lose school board, too. Mm -hmm. Conservatives aren't at the school board. Christians aren't at the school board. Uh, and I use this example a lot. I use it on that Zoom call. The Charlotte mayor's race is the one that brought us this bathroom freedom. Y'all remember this? Mm -hmm. I'm about two hours south of Charlotte. So one of the very first meetings, the mayor of Charlotte, the new mayor, this lady says, we need to have bathroom freedom ordinances. What does that mean? Bathroom freedom. I'm, we don't restrict anybody now. They don't charge nobody a dime no more. I haven't done it in years. What's that about? It took the third reading before pastors paid attention. It was too late. They put off the meeting. They had 1,500 people come to the third reading. They waited till 3 o'clock in the morning to vote, and they still voted for it. Bathroom freedom swept the country. And if you think that ain't coming for your church, your head's in the sand. You need to stick it out, pull it out, and get involved because it happened. But here's the key thing. Of all the people in Charlotte, North Carolina, the voter turnout was 6%. 6% of the eligible voters voted for mayor of Charlotte. You know, a just a couple churches saying this is important. you got to go vote. you got to go vote your values. And hey, that person's not perfect either, but that one believes in bathroom freedom. So the ACC, the NCAA, the NBA, they conduct corporate terrorism on the state of North Carolina. And then it swept the country in ordinance after ordinance, city, county, all over the place. And now if you read what they say, they want this intersection of sexual freedom and religious liberty. And guess who's going to win if they get to appoint judges? And that's just one example. So I travel the country, and here's what I learned in all that time. is so if we turn out Christian vote, then we don't have to lose as election. I wrote to Wrights Priebus in July of 2013. I can find it in my original writing. Wrights, if we ever hit 80% of the self-identified evangelical vote, the left can't win dog catcher, they can't win president, they can't win nothing in between. If Christians just go vote their values. I believe what you're seeing going on right now is just an effort to suppress the Christian vote. You know, if the left were thought that their guy was ahead so bad, they wouldn't be working so hard to tell you how bad he is and how terrible it is. They just wouldn't be. I've been in politics at the highest level. I know how this works. But I know this. Churches don't need to stand there and say, you must vote for this person or I endorse this person. Don't do that. But here's what you can do is run a nonpartisan voter registration. What we're going to do with our organization, I left the RNC um, in 2017. I started my own 501c3 called Faith Wins. Um, Corbin will know a guy named Dr. David Gibbs. Some of y'all know Dr. Gibbs. The guy is brilliant. He's a mentor of mine. He set up my 501. He told me, Chad, you ought to be doing this for yourself anyway. So I started raising my own money. I named it Faith Wins. And we started running around the country just building relationships. I love what Jerry Falwell said in the 1990s. He said, the problem Christians have is when we win, we quit. When we lose, we quit. We spend all our energy ramping back up to tell people this is an important election. And we wonder why we lose on issues time after time after time again. And so my goal was to build relationships. You know, Mike and Jack and Corbin and Pastor and other people, I, I won't have one with y'all. So that every time an election, we don't want to burden you. We just want to give you tools and resources to get a voter registration done and tell your people what a big deal this is. I, I brought CJ to help me drive. But the other thing is, 
He is getting your email addresses. If we don't have your email, please give it to us. We just want to keep you informed. I don't want to burden you. My pastor is one of my best friends and mentors. I don't want to burden him either. But I do want to supply with you what you need, voter guides, platform comparisons, and the how to do the part about voter registration is just not a hard deal. We're going to target two Sundays in September, probably the last two, because people are traveling. And, of course, the whole Wuhan flu thing is blowing it up, and some people aren't even back in church. But it's not just for voter registration. It's to talk about the importance of why we do voter registration. If it's anywhere, if it's anywhere between 40 and 50 million, man, Moving the needle two or three points makes a big deal for your local races too because we need Christians in those places. We shouldn't be surprised at all when non-Christians act like non-Christians. We shouldn't be stunned at all. What we ought to be stunned is Christians who stay home and don't see that they're responsibility. I, I gotta tell you, I think the left and the media, and I don't mean to be redundant, but the left and the media have been very successful at telling us, you Christians shouldn't be involved in this. This is dirty business. You know, y'all are good at evangelism and missions. And man, Pastor, we love your vacation Bible school, but y'all shouldn't do politics. And we back off and we put on our turn the other cheek, Jesus, because we don't want to fit anybody. And the truth is, we better find our turn the tables over Jesus. Mm -hmm. I think times dictate we better stand for freedom and stand up for it right here and now because it's a mess. You know, I, don't, I never would have thought we saw, we've seen big city mayors telling their police officers to stand down. Let them burn, let them loot, let them destroy. I, I asked my kids, they're all working, how much of your tax dollars should go to pay these cities to rebuild when the mayor and the police officers wouldn't even defend those people's lives and homes and businesses? It's, it's an atrocity. We, we never thought it. But every one of those people is a progressive. And have you been around many progressives? <laughs> they don't agree with nothing you believe in. They don't agree with a single thing you agree with. They think you're a loony tune. They do. I, I did all those national TV interviews with a bunch of leftists. And I, and I, I tell this, this kind of a joke, but all the media is not liberal. It, it's only like a 96% of them. They're not liberal. But I, I, I can't tell you how many of them were whispering stupid stuff in my ear right before a national interview, cursing me, saying stupid stuff, mocking me. That, that's how they operate. They don't agree with nothing you believe in. And I believe we could convince them because I think we got to tell people why this matters, why America, man, this is the greatest, freest place in the country, Amen. in the whole wide world. And pe people die to come here. Mm -hmm. pe people die to have this kind of thing called, just look at the line of people wanting to get in. Like I said, this is the only place you can come and you can actually be an American. But I think they ought to recognize there's some possible reasons this has been so successful. 244 years now, the longest standing constitutional republic in the history of mankind. And instead, they want to condemn us. You know, you can go to places right now and see every bad thing in the world, but they're not fixing it. We've actually fixed stuff here. We've actually fixed it. You know why? It's because it's predominantly been run by people who believed in the Word of God. That, that's exactly right. And so here's what we want you to do. Here's our ask for coming down and getting you to come out on a two, uh, it's a Monday. Monday. A Monday afternoon. They run together. Um, and, and buying you lunch is, is, is number one. If you uh, would text this number, I have a text number that we'll keep you informed. It's 76076. That's the place, the thing to put in the phone number. And one word, faith wins. Now, your little autocorrect will try to give you the space. You'll have to eliminate the space and put faith wins. F A I T H, faith wins. So 76076, faith wins. The first thing you'll get back when you did do that little deal is you'll get a list of church do's and don'ts. My friend Matt Staver, y'all know Matt from Orlando with Liberty Council, wrote that up. We've done that on the screen at our church. When people say, oh, you can't do that. It is a legal list of what churches can and can't do. It's fantastic. It'll blow your mind how much more active you as a pastor, a deacon, a Sunday school teacher, a leader in the church can be. So 76076, one word, faith wins. Second thing is, if you would host one of these in your neck of the woods, let me know. I got donors who will fund the lunch because they want us out talking. They want us to do this buzz. The third thing is, who do you know you can bring back? We're going to do more of these. I got elected as a delegate in South Carolina. I'm going to be in Jacksonville. Your state matters big time. Y'all know this. Amen. Your state big time matters. Uh, I got to be in... Um, uh, in the room the night watching the results come in. And I got to tell you, the guy running at the top wasn't my top one. I, but I worked for the party, and I understood, man, we got to turn people out. 
we got to vote biblical the best we can. Uh, and I've been around him. I've been in small rooms around him. And he was probably my 17th out of all 16 choices. And I, <laughs> But the guy's done everything he said. The boy's granddad, my first wife's dad, passed away a few weeks ago. And this old gentleman, 93 years old, came up. And he said, you know, I wasn't a fan of him. So I voted Democrat all my life. But this guy's done exactly what he said. And that's why I'm voting for him again. And so as a C3, we'll endorse. But I'm going to talk about issues. I, I remember when um, I was in Durango, Colorado, early on with the GOP faith. And I had about 40 or 45 pastors in the room. And this young guy came over and he said, you know, we just don't do politics in our church. I said, well, I, I don't want you to do politics. But it was one of those, Lord, you better give me a line. I don't know what to say. It was the first time I'd encountered it. Because it's a pretty big room. Everybody's motivated. Yep, we ought to be involved. And this guy said, we just don't do politics. We don't. We don't, and I said, what do you mean by that? He said, well, we don't talk about controversial issues. Okay. I was like, Lord, you better give me a lie. And I said, Pastor, can you find for me where the controversial issues and the political stuff starts in the Bible and where the spiritual stuff stops? It worked. Because there's no place where it separates. If we're to have a biblical worldview, we're to be involved in everything. My God's big enough to be in everything all the time, 24-7, 365 days, 366 years in a leap, 366 days in a leap year, because everything matters to God. That's right. And so I believe we've been successfully talked out of being in the arena. That's what's happened. And we've given it up. I mean, we're not involved in the Hollywood, right? Uh, academia. Look at that. Our kids are getting brainwashed, for goodness sakes. I mean, have you watched? I actually, I told CJ... I try to watch some of the videos of these angry people. There's a time to hold your tongue, time to keep your head down. There's a time, but it's not now. Sometimes you gotta go.